It always comes to this. Hello there guys, here to do a tattoo progress update today. Uh, where I last left off, I had just done the red and blue in the, the brain here, and some of the black. Um, obviously I've had another session since, this is healed now. Um, again, there's going to be a lot more color in there, like it's going to be a lot more flushed out when it's done. But, as you can see, it all stayed in there, just like it always does, just like I say it will. Um, so no surprises there um we're gonna be back over here no over here this week coming in just a few days i guess two days from now and then the following week we'll be back over here uh the goal is to basically get the rest of the color and probably the rest of the black in the tentacles the first pass anyway um if we don't get it all done it'll be mostly done and then it'll just be kind of like detailing and um, highlighting some things um, same thing for next week with this side and then we'll be back over here again uh, the following week probably to tackle this part um, maybe patch up or touch up this part here uh, as I mentioned in a vlog many weeks ago now um, the third session um, some of the white didn't stay down here real well that's actually been the worst healing part of the whole thing so far and uh, next to that has been the the scabbing that we had over here in the light green and blue colors. So some parts of this will obviously need to be touched up and other parts not so much. Um, all par for the course. No no issues there. Um, as you can see, it's looking pretty clear today. Um, it will look even better soon. Now, moving along, because I don't want to talk about the chest piece the whole time. Uh, I, could, I mean, I've got enough to say, God knows, but... Uh, obviously, I had more red done with uh, Mr. Terry. Um, you could call it a Christmas gift. I don't know. I think this will be near the end of January or the beginning of February when this goes up. But um, we had our Christmas party yesterday and just before that, or here at the shop. And just before that, uh, uh, I had a two and a half hour session with Terry. Well, two hours-ish. It ended up being like two and a half hours because... Um, there were interruptions and, and little pauses and crap like that, but um, we got at it. We went back into the under jaw area that didn't saturate as well. Um, we did that first because, as I've mentioned many times, the chin tends to bleed like crazy. So the first thing we did was we did the chin, and then we did the under jaw, and then we went uh, both sides. Um, it created like... Um, and I, I figured this would be the case because I've seen it a little bit already in the neck. Now remember, all of this is healed, right? All of this stuff is already healed and these roses have been healed for two months now. Um, as of making this video, the red is about a month, maybe a little over a month on the neck. Now anyway, um, I've already seen this kind of effect of the dynamic and Panthera for that matter, all blackout tattoos have a bit of a blue tinge to them i don't care what kind of editing you want to do or what kind of crap you want to talk all your blackout tattoos they have them too um there's a blue bluey green undertone to all black ink um it's in the ingredients if, if you uh if you need the proof so that's why sometimes in the light the blackout or a big solid chunk of black can look um blue they used to use more green um, elements back in the day that's why it's commonly believed by some dinosaurs that all blackout tattoos will turn green one day that's not really the case anymore they will blue out a little bit though that is gonna happen that's not it's not really uh like i think you can keep a gray base for the most part like or like a a dark gray slash black base for the most part but for the most part uh or not for the most part but um over time, your ink will blue a little. Now, it's not enough that I'm upset about it, but it is pretty much a fact. 
Um, I've seen it in pretty well. Anyone who's had blackout tattoos for a very, very long time, they kind of take on like a, uh, a bluer complexion. So anyway, the reason why I mention that is um, the, the great idea of putting red against that is it doesn't really matter so much that the red stays super, super vibrant. Um, it doesn't really matter if this lightens up much at all or darkens or whatever at all. It just ma matters that, and I've explained this before, but it matters that it creates contrast between the foreground and the, and the background. That's all you're trying to do. Um, the original idea was to do like opaque gray or something or uh, silver, some kind of a, a middle ground tone between black and white. But it was actually, and I'll give him credit again, um, it was Kevin's idea, the co-host of Remy Reacts, to try uh, dark red or burgundy color. So red, vi uh, red velvet is what we settled on. And uh, oddly enough, we put it up here too. And uh, the color that we got up there is not the color on the bottle. Um, we got the color that, th that it looks like by putting it over black. So I'm reiterating this again. The color that we used looks better over blackout than pre-blackout. That's... My opinion, I mean, you can you can think this is better if you like that, but I think this is a nicer color. Um, so, who knew? Mixing colors with black, you can get some pretty unique combinations. I've never had a... a I've had a lot of red, but I've never had a red like this before. So, anyway, um, the contrast between the foreground and that blue tone black, even with the white, still has a bit of a shine. Um, you can even see it here it kind of looks light blue because it's next to that dark red. So if you were one of the people out there, if you were one of the people out there that thought that these lines were going to vanish at some point, man, I got a bridge to sell you. <laughs> I wouldn't bet against me in this realm anymore. Like I, if you were at the beginning, I would, I would be done now. Um, it's not an ego thing either. It's just the more we do with this, like the whole team here at the shop, um, like, it's not even a matter of, like, oh, will it work? It's like, oh, no, we'll figure it out, right? Like, it's that's kind of the overall spirit here. A lot of people at this shop are doing um, a lot of different things now that are commonly not believed to work. Like, for example, um, Terry has just recently done a pass of white over something that we would have lasered prior, and the white actually lightened it a lot more than the laser would. Now, that's after I've been saying now for about a year here, why are we even bothering with laser anymore? Why are we doing white? Well, just white it out or just opaque grays, whatever. Just try it. Now, Kevin's already done that once here. Um, it worked pretty well. But Terry put a coat of white over a tattoo he plans on covering. And it's one pass. You can barely see the old tattoo. Like, it's all smudged. It's all pretty well gone. So what what my curiosity is and I and I think this quite often now with all this stuff is like is there like a some attempt to squash this or like is it really just denial or like I I can't really quite understand where the pushback comes from it doesn't feel like it's um like it's earned like it the like the idea that you can't cover an old tattoo with new ink, you have to laser it or whatever the hell. Like, it has to be darker to cover, lighter. Like, I don't think that that's based in any scientific fact anymore. If there was ever any science to that before, I think that's done now. I think there's enough evidence that that's wrong that we should just be throwing that out. But, I mean, I've talked ad nauseum about that before, but... Like, I, I just don't think that it pans out anymore. I don't think you can say that and be taken seriously anymore with the stuff that I've seen. And not just on myself, but on other people, too. I've seen some really wild stuff now where it's like, if you're going to come at me with uh, that kind of logic, I'm just not going to listen to you. You're just, you're not part of the discussion in my mind and you're holding things back. It's time for you to go, more or less. Um... I feel like that sort of skepticism may have had a point or a place in the 80s or the 90s, but it's gone now. Uh, all, that, all that's separating you from doing whatever you want with tattoos is 
your patience uh, and having a tattooer who can saturate. That's really all there is to it. Um, now, I will get off of this topic because I'm sure some people are getting nauseated listening to Remy harp on about uh, uh, old school logic. But I'm thinking I really, really want to do one of my sleeves with Terry. Um, I don't want to do all of it with Rick. I really like how this is coming out. And I really like the stuff that we have on my torso. Like, I like all of what we've done, me and Rick. I have no complaints about any of this. I think it's super cool. I think it's super elaborate and super detailed. I'm very th happy with the work we've done. As long as it's taken us, it's... And we're going to keep working together. Um, I've got plans to keep working with him for basically forever. Uh, but I want to do one of my sleeves with Terry. And I think that as people keep pointing out my rose neck and face tattoos and my head tattoos don't go with the body theme. And that was quite intentional to some degree. I've always had that duality in my body suits. Always. That's always been a staple of, I've always had two running themes at least. Like I think two is good. I don't think, I think you can do one. I think that's great, but I, I like a lot of styles of tattoos. I am, I love tattoos in general. Um, pretty much can love like anything or like something about any kind of tattoo. Um, so to me, it doesn't make sense to just pick one. Um, and you can still have it all flow. It can still make sense and, and be contextual. And that this is all uh, a work of uh, work over black and an experimentation. That's enough of a theme on its own. But I do plan on doing one of my sleeves with Terry. I, I've been hemming and hawing about what my right sleeve would be for a while. I know what my left sleeve will be. Um, Rick and I planned that out two years ago. But my right sleeve has been kind of like, well, I could do this thing or that thing. And Scott, the guy I used to do the podcast with, uh, the, the bald dude that had all the jobs, for anyone who's watched the podcast, he's been pitching me ideas to do one of my sleeves because he really wants to work with me. But I want to go with Terry. I think Terry is uh, better than he knows. And I look for certain things with tattoo artists. I don't look for some, I don't so much go for style, I go for substance with it where I watch their work heal and uh, the line quality and I check for blowouts and uh, um, shading technique and just there's all kinds of things that I'm looking for that I see a lot in Terry. Um, but he has more of the big bold um, see it from across the room style where uh, Rick is a very, very competent artist. Um, I love his shit. But it's super, super detailed, super intricate, um, and busy. And I think that's cool for some stuff. But I want some of that big bold in my, my suit, too. So I think we're going to extend this same idea all over one of my sleeves. We already have the rose on this hand. So it makes sense to do more with that on this side. And then there'll be more of this stuff going on. And the whole thing will make more sense, is my feeling. Um, there are people out there who are like, oh, get another rose tattoo. Super original. Yeah, it stands the test of time, asshole. Roses are never going away. You can do a rose in any style and it could be cool. And I've always, lo I've always loved roses and I've always had them in my suit. So, and if you want a poetic reason for it, um, they tie into my name, Ephemeral Remy, quite well. So, if you need more than that, uh, you can... Uh, you can, you can use that for your reasoning as to why I have so many roses. I also just like the way they look. I think that they're uh, a great way to flatter the body and they can fit almost any spot in a different way. You can, you can build a rose to fit any spot on the body. You can do them in any style, any color really. Like they're super versatile. But all the roses that I will be doing and the same reason for why I have been graying these ones out is I want them all to be the same value. So for the people out there that think that this is going to turn into the red, it's most likely not. I'm probably going to keep all of this stuff um, like white on black and black on black. And the background is going to be red. So I plan on having a lot of red out um, background on this arm and then this same kind of thing. So I'm thinking roses and thorns and a red backdrop and it'll connect into the neck. Um, yeah. 
I haven't got it all figured out yet, but uh, Terry's down to work on that with me. And uh, I'm having a good time working with both of these guys, but they just both got different skill sets. And um, yeah. Anyway, I'll show this off real close. This was just done yesterday. So again, it's going to be more like that color. I think we're going to keep most of it this time on the face because we went to the face last um, when we did it. We didn't go as far up either. We didn't frame the white. We just kind of teased it on the face. This time it was really built into the face. And uh, I think that we've got a really good shot of uh, keeping all of that now. Or at least everything but the chin. I'm always skeptical of the chin. All right, this one's been pretty long, so uh, I'll talk to you guys again soon. Have a great day.